One of the things I find beautiful about this world is how we tend to inspire each other. A lot of the best pieces of art are built upon those that came before us. Shakespeare was inspired by a poem when he wrote Romeo and Juliet. The tragical history of Romeo and Juliet. Lovecraft inspired by religious texts along with history. This show itself being inspired by people on the side as well, such as Rob Dyke, Kaylee Elise, Aaron Mankey's lore series, and a bunch of other dark stuff you'd find on the web. Though, while finding inspiration in others is a beautiful thing, it can be twisted and warped, making people do terrible acts. One of the sick facts of life is that some of the worst people find fame by doing horrible things. In this dark world of ours, inspiration can be a beautiful thing, though it can be sinister as well. January 29th, 1974. The last letter from the infamous Zodiac Killer would be sent to the local newspaper outlet, The Chronicle. I'm sure that the Zodiac Killer needs little introduction. But for the uninitiated, he's akin to a modern day Jack the Ripper. Not for the way his victims were found, but the infamy surrounding him. The Zodiac murders started in 1966. The killer sent cryptic letters to the San Francisco Chronicle. The letters rambled. They hinted at Satanism. This was a composite drawing of a suspect who was never caught. To this day, he's never been identified. He even went as far to give the police clues, taunting them with cryptic ciphers, sending bloody garments in the mail, and giving hints to his identity. He would give letters to news outlets, claiming that it would be good news for them as he would start killing once more. With a total of five confirmed fatalities, two people injured, and a suspected of 20 to 28 more slain under his spree, his legacy left an impression on the town of San Francisco that will likely never leave. Sadly, the Zodiac Killer remains a mystery to this day, and he has become something more. The way he taunted police and gave hints of his identity has made him more than just a serial killer. His likeness could be that of a criminal genius that one would see in film. The only difference being, he was a real man. Media circulated around him. There's multiple films, documentaries, and books based upon him and his actions. His personality towards authorities is often imitated in shows such as Psych with the killers Yin and Yang. Even during his pre murder, there was a 1971 film called, funnily enough, The Zodiac Killer. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Bob Keel here. Tonight, we have more news on The Zodiac Killer. Hey, fellas, hold it down. I want to hear this. He writes another letter to the papers. And I quote, This is the Zodiac speaking. I am the murderer of the taxi driver over on Washington and Maple Street. They could have caught me last night if they had... The film coming out when the case was still fresh, and many were still mourning. Though the director Tom Hansen later stated in 2017 that it was motivated by an elaborate plot to catch the man, figuring him to be egotistical enough to attend the film's premiere. As likely of a case that could be, basing work upon a fresh case with a man who is still at large seems cruel to the one suffering from his actions. Either way, his legacy has left an impact upon society and the way we view serial killers in general. The sad fact is, with time, wounds aren't as serious. People don't mourn the passengers of the Titanic anymore, lest we mourn the victims of the Zodiac Killer. The fatalities are lessened to the extent of the man himself. The person people remember is the killer, not the victims. One thing is for sure though, with the way we treat tragedies in societies, and sometimes even popularize it through media, it's likely to inspire others. Such is the case with Herberto Eddy Sida, a man who idolized the Zodiac Killer and wished to follow in his path. Eddie was not like most men of his age, with no friends, no job, no significant other, and no school, he had a lot of free time. Recently having been expelled from high school as well, after they had caught him with a firearm on campus. 
It was obvious to many that he was a troubled soul. He was easily agitated and had difficulty getting along with people. One incident of note is the time he went out into the street and yelled, I am going to start killing. I'm going to start killing because I am getting no sex. He spent almost all of his free time at home, in a small apartment in Brooklyn, New York. Eddie was fond of few things, firearms, the Green Berets, and the Bible. He idolized the Green Berets though. As soon as he was of age, he applied without a second thought. Though he failed, the reason for his dismissal is unknown to the world though. What is known though is he returned to daily life, reading books about firearms, military maneuvers, and how to evade capture in war zones. Though over time, Sita would begin to study serial killers as well, such as Ted Bundy. Though late one night, Sita would sit down and watch a documentary on the most infamous killer of all, the Zodiac Killer. He would think to himself, holy smokes, this guy terrorized a whole city and never got caught. I got nothing to live for, I don't got no job, I already got those skills, I could be famous. I could do that. In the coming months, he would begin to idolize the killer. He kept scrapbooks on the case, and eventually he would begin to plan out killings that would be similar in fashion to the Zodiac. He would take literal meaning to the word, and hunt down people based upon their Zodiac sign. Eddie would begin to create zip guns at his home, homemade handguns, though his works were so shoddy that most of them would only be able to fire once before breaking down. This would be partially to his benefit though, as he would later state in a letter, the lack of rifling marks would prevent my capture. With the necessary tools at his disposal, Eddie would begin his six year spree of terror, starting on the night of March 8, 1990. Mario or Zoko would be the first to suffer from Eddie's sick mind. On his way home from work, he'd be confronted by a man in a ski mask. Mario, fearing for his life, would flee the scene, but would be proceeded to be shot in the back. Mario recounts that he laid still while Eddie stood over his body and put the gun to his head. Mario lied still though, and Eddie must have perceived him dead from the first bullet wound. Time passed and eventually Mario would get up, limp back to his house, make a cup of joe, and call the police. Mario sign a Scorpio. It would only be a mere 21 days until Eddie found his next victim, a Gemini by the name of Jeremine Montrendo. He would be walking home after visiting some friends in the Bronx. The only things that Jeremiah would remember though would be a blow to his head and he would be shot in the side. Thankfully, he survived. Sadly though, the third victim would be the one that makes Eddie Sita a murderer. May 31st, 1990 would be the day Eddie Sita became a serial killer. Joseph Prost, a 78 year old man with a Taurus as a sign would be walking down 87th Road in Woodhaven, New York. He was shot by Eddie, who quickly fled the scene afterwards. Joseph would be transported to a nearby hospital, where he died in the following weeks. It's unclear if it was by cardiac arrest or infection. What is clear though is that Joseph's life was ended prematurely. Though Joseph was able to give a testimony before his departure, he would tell the police, the man came up and asked me for a glass of water. I, of course, I left to go get him some water, but he proceeded to shoot me in the back. Upon investigation of the crime scene, a note would be found nearby. On it were scribblings of the four zodiac signs, Gemini, Scorpio, Cancer, and Taurus, along with the words, Zodiac, time to die. The next victim would be Larry Parham, a homeless man who earlier stated, a man asked about my zodiac sign while we were chatting. Asleep on a bench in Central Park, Larry felt a sharp pain in his chest and saw a man walking away from him. Upon looking down, he sees the blood pooling out of his chest. 
he had been shot. Thankfully, Larry survived the situation. He was a cancer. The investigation of the scene would lead to another note being found. At this point, a lot of attention was drawn to the case. Police noticed that each attack was done 21 days apart, though 21 days later and nothing came. It wouldn't be until 1992 that Eddie would strike again, with even more malice than before. Patricia Fonti, a Leo, 39 year old, homeless, and mentally impaired. She was the perfect victim for Eddie. He would find her in a subway late at night and shoot her in the back. Though she struggled afterwards, this led to a small fight between the two, which ended with Eddie stabbing the woman over 100 times. At first, the murder wouldn't be linked to the Zodiac Killer. It would be chalk up to one of the many homicides that happen in New York almost daily. After the brutal attack, it wouldn't be until one year, on June 4th, 1993, when the Zodiac came out once more. This time his target was a Libra by the name of James Weber. He got off rather lucky compared to the rest though, simply being shot in the leg. The next to suffer from Eddie would be John DeAnsel, a 47-year-old Virgo. John was homeless, and after finding out his sign, Eddie shot him point-blank in the neck. John passed shortly thereafter on July 20th. The final victim for Eddie would be the first repeat sign. At this point, Eddie believed that the police were close to his trail and he couldn't go about asking people about their sign anymore. He just wanted blood now. The final victim would be a Taurus by the name of Diane Ballard. She was shot in the neck as well. Thankfully, she survived. The bullet missed anything vital. Following these attacks though, the Zodiac Killer would send a letter to the police announcing his grand return and claiming responsibility for the spree of assaults during 1992 through 1994. Though, after this letter, his grand return ended abruptly. One of the more surprising facts about Sita would be his strong sense of justice, most notably being towards drugs. He abhorred the use of them, even going as far to oust local drug dealers to the police. He had an argument with his sister about her associating with types he deemed disreputable. Though he would be unable to convince his sister and she continued to hang around men that Sita presumed to be in some illegal activities. He thought what she was doing was unlawful and things were finally brought to a head on June 18th of 1996 when Gladys brought over a male friend, and after much dispute between the siblings, a furious Eddie would grab one of his zip guns and fire it into the wall as a warning for the two of them. Gladys would not back down though. The argument continued and eventually she feared for her own life. She fleed out of the apartment, but not without getting shot by Eddie once. She made it into a neighbor's apartment and would call 911. What followed would be a three-hour shootout between him and the authorities. Over a dozen officers would be brought outside of his apartment, exchanging fire all the while they tried to talk him down. Eventually, Eddie was convinced to let himself to be taken into custody. He relinquished all of his weaponry, lowering a bucket full of 13 zip guns down to the police, and would proceed to give himself in. Authorities that went into the apartment afterwards would find pipe bombs, crossbows, knives, and bomb making guides. After the incident, Sita would say, I like the movie Black Hawk Down. It reminds me of my own gun battle. He would be sentenced to two life sentences, a total of 238 years with no chance of parole. During the trial, he would mutter about how he had to kill those people. They were evil. 
Media inspires a lot of what we do. Mass coverage on events like the Zodiac is a double-edged sword. The public not only needs to be aware, but they deserve to know what's happening in the world around them, especially when it's so close to home. Though with such coverage, people know they can be famous for doing horrible things. In this dark world of ours, a lot of us desire to have our names known, no matter the cost. Hey guys, thanks for watching another video. You can find a link to my UG SoundCloud along with Unique's YouTube page down in the description below. If you can, feel free to like, subscribe, share, comment, all of that YouTube crap. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you all again soon.